Hello, this is a lap guide to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal in the Spec Racer Ford. Hopefully you can use this as a basis to build your lap times as the week progresses. I'm currently using the default iRacing weather of which I've put the details in the description below. Enjoy! Turns 1 and 2. I'm currently in 4th gear and going to begin braking around the 1 marker on the right hand side. There's also a piece of grass on the ground in the same vicinity. This is the reference I tend to use as it's a larger visual reference as my braking point. I'm going to be shifting down to 3rd gear and bring the car over to the apex on the left hand side just around the kerb. I actually take too much kerb on this occasion, it unsettles the car slightly. You want to avoid it, but I get away with it on this occasion. As you line up for the second turn, you want to cut diagonally across the little short straight between the two. In this little area, you want to then do a second section of braking and shift down to second gear. I then hug the kerb on the right hand side most of the way around the corner until around the area where the pit exit line ends. This I use as a rough guide for putting the power on out of the corner. You want to do it gently out of this turn because if you do it too much you may cause a little bit of wheel spin and as it's an uphill exit this may hamper your speed along the following straight. Allow the car just to drift gently out to the left hand side on the exit. Turns 3 and 4. Much like many of the chicanes at Montreal, you want to focus primarily on the first corner. The second corner can then be used in an acceleration zone for the straight afterwards. In this case I'm going to be braking at the 1 marker and I'm going to shift down to 3rd gear. My apex is going to be the red and white kerb on the inside, however I do not want to touch the larger red kerb inside of that as that will unsettle the car, can cause me to spin and there's a wall in close proximity just afterwards. As soon as I'm off of that kerb I'm going to be trying to accelerate through the second part. You'll be quite liberal with how much kerb you take on the left hand side of the second corner of this chicane and you want to carry as much speed through but you do need to be conscious that there is a wall in close proximity on the exit so if you feel that you're going to run wide you do need to have a little lift and get away with it so you can fight another day. Having gone flat out through turn 5, keeping as close to the wall on the right hand side as you can, I'm going to be breaking in a straight line at roughly the end of the white wall on the right hand side with turns 6 and 7. You want to apply brake pressure gently here and bring the car into the left hand side again hugging the kerb on the inside but not taking too much as the red kerb inside will cause you to spin. As soon as you are off the kerb once again you want to be getting onto full throttle and using the second turn of this chicane as an acceleration zone carrying as much speed as through it as you possibly can. It's quite a quick change of direction here as soon as you come off of that inside curve of the first left-hander. So it can be quite easy to misjudge this corner. Turns 8 and 9. On the straight leading up to this chicane, I tend to stay in 4th gear. I just don't find it beneficial to shift up to 5th and then back down again in such a short space of the time. I also try and straight line that straight as much as possible because it's curved. The car isn't that fast so you want to just 
shorten the distance between apexes between the two chicanes. For turn eight, I'm going to begin braking about halfway under the bridge. I'm going to be shifting down to third gear. You can take the white curbs on the inside of both of the left and right corners here, but you will be quicker if you avoid them. Once again, like the two previous chicanes, you'll want to do all the braking and acceleration in the first part of the chicane, using the second corner as an acceleration zone for the longer straight afterwards. It's once again quite a quick change of direction and you'll want to be conscious there's wall and close proximity on the track out. Into the hairpin. I personally find this the most challenging corner on the circuit. You want to be game braking about halfway between the two and one boards on the left hand wall. Braking gently, making sure not to lock the brakes, you'll be shifting down into second gear. The key aspect of this is hugging the corner on the inside as close as you can while accelerating out of the corner nice and gentle because you have the longer straight afterwards. Carrying speed out, much like at the exit of turn two, is really important but can easily be ruined by overdoing it. into the final chicane. Once again you can be quite liberal with the curbs here, however you will find that you are quicker if you avoid the larger white curbs on the inside of each apex. I begin braking at the hut that is on the left hand side, however if your graphic settings are too low, that hut disappears. You want to make your initial turn in around the one board on the left. You can be more liberal with the curb on the inside of the first part of the chicane but you do want to try and avoid as much as possible the one on the left. If you hit that, it could pitch you off into the wall on the exit. You'll also want to carry as much speed as possible through the second part of the corner so that you can then carry that down the straight to the finish line. Across the start finish line, I keep to the right hand side. If you watch it in Formula 1, you'll know that they often move to the left. In this vehicle, there's no benefit at all.